everyone, welcome to Trinity Kids Online. I'm Brady. And I'm Jared. And today we have a huge announcement. We do? Of course, check out this video. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Wow, you are not gonna wanna miss that. That's right, Brady and I are gonna be there. So if you love hanging out with us, playing challenge time, or just having fun, you, this is a can't miss experience for your family and we can't wait to see you guys there. Okay, are you ready to jump into today's video now? Of course, let's go. Brady. I have a story yeah. for you. Okay. Okay, we just had this amazing dinner. You know the ones that like still, like you think about later and your mouth is still watering, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It was one of those. It was spaghetti, which is my absolute favorite. And the sauce, so meaty. There was so much meat in there. It was full of Italian flavor. It had the basil, it had the okay. oregano, okay. it yeah. had the vegetables all mixed in there and then placed over perfectly cooked noodles. What could possibly make the meal better, do you think? Dessert. Yes, dessert. So I go over to the fridge and I grab the handle and I pull it open and right there on the middle shelf is the most amazing, tantalizing, mouth-watering, I'll tell you after. <laughs> okay. What, what, J Jared, you can't just leave me on this cliffhanger, bro. I what it wasn't! I don't, we're gonna talk about it after, but we're talking about exactly that this month, a cliffhanger. That's right, I'm remembering it right now. See, it's all about grit and when we can do it in those situations in our lives, when they just feel hard or feel impossible, it just feels like a cliffhanger, you know? Exactly, so before we dive into our story from Joseph's life today in the Bible about holding on when life is hard, we got challenge time <gasps> ready to roll. And challenge time today is called Surprise! You didn't know that, where we are going to set, put up a statement, and you're going to have to decide if it's true or if it's false. So you'll need to decide which side of your room will be true answer, representative of the true answer, which side of your room will be representative of the false answer. And whenever the statement comes up, decide which answer you think it is. And then if someone gets wrong, you can say, I'm surprised you didn't know that. That's right. So grab some peeps and your house to play along with you and see who will come out on top as the random trivia champion in Surprise, Surprise. You Didn't Know That. Let's play. Here we go guys for challenge time. We surprised you didn't know that where a statement is going to be coming up on the screen and you're gonna decide if it's true or false. Here we go. Question numero uno. In Switzerland, is it illegal to own only one guinea pig because they get lonely? True or false? Hmm. I do agree guinea pigs get lonely, 100% true. There's no way, guinea I get lonely, guinea pigs have to get lonely. The answer is true! Let's go! If I was a guinea pig, I would want a friend too. Don't you think I would want a friend if you are a guinea pig? Yep, me too. All right, here we go. Over 75% of people who read this will try and lick their elbow. Aha, aha. No, no, I'm one of the 275%. Wow, that's embarrassing. Oops, well, whatever. I guess that has to be true because I just tried to do it right away. The answer is false! Oh. <laughs> Why am I the only one that would try to do that, man? <sighs> whatever, hopefully you guys got it. If you didn't, that's okay. Moving on to round number three. That was two, this is three. Here we go. 23% of all photocopier faults worldwide are caused by people sitting on them, photocopying their butts. Wow. Hmm. Now this is a larger problem than we were anticipating. Hmm. Let's think about this. How many people want to photocopy their bum? A lot. Let's go with true. 100% true. The answer is 
true, no way! Oh man, people need to stop doing that. That is not okay. Nobody, nobody wants, no, stop people. It is not funny. It's not funny, I got, stop, it's not funny. I'm not laughing. <laughs> I'm not laughing, I promise guys, that's not funny. All right, moving on to round number four, here we go. Boom, is it against the law to burp in a church in Canada? True or false? <laughs> Well, I happen to be in Canada, and let me tell you, I've ripped a couple burps. And let me tell you, I'm still here. So, <laughs> has to be a big old false. Let's see the answer is false. Well, guys, burp prodigy right here. So, I would know, obviously, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that you know, if you burp a lot, you just know. And, you know, in a church in Canada, super easy one. Well, guys, hopefully you got that one. That was just like super easy. Well, moving on to the next round. Here we go. Round number five. Here we go. A giraffe is the only animal that can clean their ears with their tongue. Answer true or false? <laughs> really? Do dogs have long ears. Elephants' tongues are like not that long, but they have massive ears. What else has a, like a snake technically could lick its ear even though its ear's not very big. It's kind of like inside its head. Hmm. Tough one, tough one, tough one. Uh, I can't think of any other animals. Can you guys think of any animals? Man, it is just impossible. Let's go with... Ah, true. I'm gonna go with true. I think it's the only answer. Let's see the answer is... True. <sighs> guys. Kind of killing it right now. Just saying. Wow, guys, that is insane. I can't even, th I guess it is the only animal that can clean its ears. Crazy, who would've thunk? Not me, I guess me, cause I got it right. <laughs> guys, so funny, but we are already at the last round of challenge time, guys. Time to focus up. You with me? Here we go. This is the question. Okay guys, no laughing allowed, here we go. Super serious mode, activate. Winnie the Pooh was originally named Winnie the Pea. <laughs> no, no laughing. Winnie the Pea is so funny. <laughs> Winnie, the, Winnie the Pea, man, that's just so funny. I, please, double true, that has to be so true. Please, man, please. Please, true, Winnie the Pea, Winnie the Pea, please, Winnie the Pea. The answer is false. No. Well, are you surprised you didn't know that? Because I am. Surprised you didn't know that to me, but maybe to you. Well guys, hopefully you true or false did super well and maybe you were surprised that you didn't know that. So the guys, thank you so much for playing little true, little false. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for playing challenge time today. And I don't know about you, but there were some like really random facts in there that didn't even seem possible. So way to hold on right till the end. And holding on when life gets hard is challenging, but it takes a lot of grit to keep going. And Jared, have you ever had a situation in your life where maybe you required to have a little extra grit? Yeah, when I was a kid, you know what was so hard? What? Math was Math. so hard. I mean, not like the simple stuff, obviously, but the older I got, the harder math got too. And so people seem to get answers so easily, but not me. And I really felt like giving up on math, you know, on so many occasions, but my dad helped and we got a tutor. Nice, and pretty nice. soon things were looking up. <laughs> and that's exactly what we are talking about. Refusing to give up when life gets hard. And today in the Story Lab, we're gonna look at Joseph's story and see what we can learn about grit. So pay attention to what stands out to you in today's story as you think about grit. Maybe there's a word in there or a phrase in there or just a part of the story that really connects with what uh, is going on in your world. So what might God be saying to you about how to hold on when things get hard? So keep that in mind as we head to the Story Lab. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about grit while we take a look at the story of someone with a very colorful wardrobe. Oh, and this happened. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we are here to talk about grit. 
I think there's some confusion about what grit really is. Well, grit is... Is grit a delectable breakfast dish from the American South? No, grit is actually... Grit is refusing to give up when life gets hard. Yes, and you need grit whenever you're facing any kind of difficult challenge, like when you're learning how to do something new, like riding a bike or a skateboard. Or when you're dealing with a hard subject in school, like social studies. Yeah, or science or art. Art's not hard. It is if you're not an artist. True. Sometimes you need grit just to get through everyday life. Also true. So let's put that to the test with today's super cool experiment that uses both science and art. It's magic milk. One, two, three, let's, let's make, make it. it. We're making magic milk. Tell them what we've got here, Z. Of course, we've got a glass pie plate, food coloring, dish soap, cotton balls, and of course, the milk. All right, so the first step into turning this regular milk into magic milk is to... Uh, the... Gosh, this is... The first step is to open the bottle. Here. No, wait, just, no, I got it, I got it. Just, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, no, <laughs> Keep, wait, wait, no. I am so sorry. It's okay, there will be no crying over this. We are refusing to give up. Yeah, grit. Paper towels, please? Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> ah, resourceful. <laughs> okay, so. Magic milk. Step one, pour a small amount of milk. All right, is that good? Looks good to me. Step two, squeeze drops of food coloring into the milk. Uh, do you need any? No, it's fine, I just... Mm, what is wrong with me? You know what? Let's just skip this whole thing. <laughs> it's time the for the story. <laughs> going. Fine. You do it. Step two: squeeze food coloring into the center of the milk. Step three: place a cotton ball covered with dish soap into the milk. Whoa. Nice. Let's get that again. You wanna know why it happens? Go on. You see, whole milk has all these fat molecules, but when dish soap is dropped right into the middle, the soap molecules race around bonding with all the fat molecules, creating a giant swirl of color. Well, still green, but now it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God created the whole amazing world, but people turned away and broke their relationship with God. Still, God had a plan. God called Abraham and Sarah and promised to bless the whole world through their family. Abraham and Sarah had a son, Isaac, who had a son named Esau and a son named Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Including the next to youngest, Joseph. And Joseph is the hero of our story. And go. Hey, everyone. Hey, Ryan. Oh, boy. You better strap in, because we are in for a bumpy ride with Joseph. Joseph was second youngest in the family, and he was his father Jacob's favorite son. Jacob gave Joseph a beautiful, expensive, colorful robe. Joseph started having dreams, and he couldn't keep them to himself. He had to tell his brothers. We were harvesting grain, and all your grain bundles bowed to mine. And in my other dream, the sun and moon and stars bowed to me. That's like mom and dad and you guys. Great way to make your big brothers like you, huh? Joseph's brothers were very jealous of him. So when Joseph's dad sent him to check up on his brothers out on the fields, they snapped. Here comes that dreamer. Let's get rid of him. No, don't harm him. Just throw him in this empty pit. And that's exactly what they did. 
They threw him in a pit. They were still deciding what to do with Joseph when a group of traders heading for Egypt showed up. Let's sell him to these traders. Joseph was sold by his very own brothers. His brothers even lied and told their father Joseph was dead. No way. Uh-huh. Can you imagine? Joseph was a teenage kid on his own in a foreign country sold into slavery. He was sold to a man named Potiphar, captain of the king Pharaoh's guards. Joseph didn't know anyone, didn't speak the language. He could have given up, but God was with him, even in Egypt. Joseph worked so hard and did so well that over several years he gained Potiphar's trust. Eventually, Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his entire estate. Things were finally looking up for Joseph, until they fell apart. Again. Potiphar's wife was sneaky, and she wanted Joseph to do something wrong. When he refused, she threw a tantrum! He, he tried to hurt me! Throw him in prison! Now, Joseph was on his own, enslaved in a foreign land, and in prison. Yeah, it was time for him to have an epic pity party, right? I mean, that's probably what I would have done. <clears throat> but Joseph was still growing. He'd come a long way from that overconfident kid who had boasted to his brothers. God was with Joseph, even in jail. Joseph still worked hard, taking care of chores, helping other prisoners. The man who ran the jail was so impressed, he put Joseph in charge of everything. One day, two brand new prisoners arrived, straight from the royal palace. The Pharaoh's royal baker and his official drink taster. Joseph made sure they were comfortable. <sighs> well, as, as comfortable as you can be in jail. But one morning, both of these guys showed up at the breakfast table looking pretty upset. Why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams. But no one can tell us what they mean. Only God knows what dreams mean. Tell me what you saw. Ah, now we're back to where we started, right? With dreams. The drink taster told of seeing a vine that budded and grew bunches of grapes. And then the drink taster squeezed the grapes right into Pharaoh's cup. Hmm. Pharaoh will release you from prison and give you your job back. Yes! When he does, please put in a good word for me. <laughs> well, after this, the baker was excited to hear about his dream, where baskets of bread sat on the baker's head and birds ate the bread. Pharaoh will release you from prison and have you killed. What? That's pretty awful news to have to give someone. But it happened just as God had revealed to Joseph. In three days, the baker was killed. But the drink taster was released from prison and given his job back. Now the drink taster will remember to tell Pharaoh about me and I'll get out. So, you think the drink taster remembered? Yep. Nope. So, Joseph was still stuck alone, in a foreign land, in prison, forgotten. But even then, God was with him. The end, for now. Wait, 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 you can't leave us hanging like that. Yeah, things got better for Joseph, right? Well, I don't want to give the whole story away, but spoiler alert, God used Joseph in a big way. And fast forward hundreds of years later, God would use Joseph's family to bless the whole world through Jesus. But none of that happened right away. So what's our part in the story? Well, just like for Joseph, there are gonna be days when things don't work out neatly for us. Maybe you miss the bus. Or you spill the milk. Or food coloring explodes on you. Or anything bad happens that you don't expect. Even in the hardest, darkest place, God is still with you. Even when you can't see it, God is still at work. So we can hold on and keep going. And choose a good attitude. Why, George, I think you've got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Hold on, because God is with you. And that is what gives you grit. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. I need grit. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with the Story Lab crew as they walked us through a part of Joseph's story. So, 
What stood out to you? You know what stood out to me was uh, that part when the story's teller said, even in the hardest, darkest place, God's still with you. Whether it's math problems. Or your water bottle leaked in your backpack. Or you have sandwiches for lunch again. Or you didn't make the team. Your team lost the game that was really important. Right. Or you didn't get as much screen time as you wanted. A friend moved away. Someone close to you is really sick. Or something else that you're facing. Know that you're not alone. God, the one who made the entire world and made you, knows the hard things that you are facing right now and wants you to know that he's right there with you. And because he's with you, you can do hard things in a good story. So we love you all. We loved hanging out with you today. The So-and-So Show is coming up right after this, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Climb. Are you ready? I was born ready. I really appreciate you changing this light bulb for me. It's a good thing you brought in a professional to do this. Yeah. I love you, Mama. All right. Righty, tidy, lefty, something. Oh, uh oh. Oh, no. Ah! Ah! Ow! Brandon, a little help? Please. Hello, everybody. I'm Lawson. And I'm Brandon. And you are watching The So and So Show. We have got an incredible show for you today with a very special guest. That's right, Brandon. It's time to welcome someone who knows stuff. Woo. See you again, Charmaine. Oh, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> of course, you need no introduction, but just in case, please tell the audience who you are and what you know. My name is Charmaine, and I'm a singer. Uh, could you give us a little bit of your, your history? Well, sure. I started off as a background singer, but then I decided to start writing music of my own, and I had a little hit song. A little <laughs> hit song. It was huge. Oh. It played everywhere around here. Well, would, you, would you? Now, we hate to put you on the spot, but do you think you could maybe sing a little bit of it for us? Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. I love this song. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I fly way up high, I break into the sky. You ask me how and I just cannot lie. You never know and I just can't deny. I cannot stop, I have to see it all. I cannot stop, I have to see it all. No! No! <laughs> Incredible! To see it so close. Oh, it's not that big a deal, not guys. Not big a <laughs> deal, it was a huge hit. It's huge, yeah. Hey, what have you been up to since the song came out? Well, I've been working on new music, and you have no idea how hard it is to write a second hit song. Oh. Well, do you want to try some on us? Sure. <laughs> Why not? Okay, um, here's the one I was working on today. All right. Cool. All right. Cool. Drop my ice cream on the ground My coat is still in the lost and found I don't know what the next word is But it's something, something, yeah well, that, that was, there is a song I mean, there. I, I think it, it, it was, um... Well, you're, I'm, you're not that into it, are you? No, it's not that. No, it's, 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 I, I it's, just think that maybe... The, well, that's, it's, it's this okay, I get it. Oh, how about wait. this one? This okay. Guy. okay. Oh, oh, all yeah, right. all right. Okay. Right. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Where? <laughs> what? 
Where? 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 Yeah. Don't know where I left my peanut butter. Don't know where I left my peanut butter. Don't know where I left my peanut butter. It's gotta be somewhere in the kitchen, right? Don't know where I left my peanut butter. All I wanted was a PB and J. Don't know where I left my peanut butter. No? I mean, I... uh, what about this one? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. There's a toad that lives in my pond outside. If he were a giant, and on his back I'd ride. <laughs> what about this one? This is the one. Computers! Computers! Beep, 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 beep! Computers! Computers! <laughs> beep, beep, boop, beep, beep, beep! Well, that's all I've been working on so far. That's all? Oh, no! What? Oh, no! Charmaine! I'm worried for you. I like you so much and think that you're so talented and I wouldn't want you to be a one-hit wonder. That was dramatic. Listen, here's the thing. I feel extremely lucky to have had one hit. You know how many artists work their entire lives and, and never have that kind of response? It's incredible. It really is. People, people love it. <laughs> but I can't predict the future. No one can. All I can do is keep making music and hope I write something else that connects with people. So you aren't worried? Worried? Yeah. No, I got into music because I have a, a song inside of me that has to get out. I was happy when I was a backup singer and I'm happy now on my own. But what are you going to do if your next song isn't a hit? Write another one. But what about the one after that? Write another one. And, and the one after that? Write another one. This job is hard. And if you want to be successful, you can't let tough times get you down. You gotta hold on. R refuse to give up. That's yeah. really inspirational, Charmaine. Yeah, I, I think I may have inspired myself. Hold on, keep trying, you're gonna make it through. <laughs> I gotta go. Oh, okay, well, thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> thank you, bye. bye. Hold on. Wow, she, she really is amazing. Yeah, uh, she is. Hey, you think we could do that? Like, I mean, write a hit song? Oh, well, I could for sure. You, you, okay. Show me, I, I wanna see this. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Hit it. Bom, bom, bom. I love chewing gum. Won't you give me some? Chewing gum, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's Bible story time with Kevin. Hey, hey guys. Um, listen, unfortunately, something has come up and I can't be with you all today, but don't worry, everything's fine. And I don't want to leave you all high and dry. So I asked my good friend Cameron and he's going to take over for me today. All right, take it away, Cameron. Hey, fellas. We're trying to write a hit song, and uh, it's really hard. Any advice? Um, sure. Write about what you know. Great. <gasps> Donuts. <clears throat> they're round, and they're also delicious. Too bad they're not nutritious. I ran out of breath, but you know what I mean? 
Yeah, what are we talking about today? Uh, today, we're talking about Joseph. Ooh, awesome. Joseph, Mary, baby Jesus. I love this story. Wait, is it Christmas? I didn't get you a present. No, actually, different Joseph. This Joseph is from the Old Testament. Okay. Joseph was one of 12 sons of Jacob. Joseph was Jacob's favorite son, which naturally made Joseph's brothers jealous. That's right, and so much more. What was that? We're going to learn all about Joseph on today's episode of... Make It To The Top! Welcome to Make It To The Top, a game show where our contestants have to climb the mountain we call life to see if they can make it to the top. I'm your host, Vanna Valmont, and today our contestant is Joseph. How are you, Joseph? I'm great, thanks, Vanna. Um, yeah, okay, so Old Testament Joseph's on a game show. Could be fun. So, you were your dad's favorite son out of 12? Pretty impressive. I know. Dad showed everyone I was his favorite by giving me a coat of many colors. Whoa, looks like you're on your way up. <laughs> It's true, things were looking pretty good for Joseph. His future was very bright. He even had dreams of what his future might look like. Tell us about your dreams, Joseph. Uh, well, I dreamed that my brothers and I were tying bunches of grain out in the field. Suddenly, my grain stood up straight, and their grain all gathered around mine and bowed down to it. So, wait, you were like the 11th son, so that means that 10 of your brothers were older than you. Whoa. And you dreamt that they all bowed down to you? Yeah. And I had another dream. The sun and moon and 11 stars all bowed to me. What a bright future. You're going to make it to the top of this mountain in no time. Joseph was having a wonderful life, but like I said, Joseph's brothers were jealous of him, and it wasn't long before they came up with a plan. When Jacob sent Joseph out to the fields to see his brothers, they were waiting for him. So you went to see your brothers? Yeah, I just wanted to see how they were doing and see how the flocks were doing. I was just walking along, not a care in the world. But then? Then I found my brothers, and they weren't too happy to see me. They took my robe. Is he gonna be okay? I don't know. Then they threw me down a well. And then they sold me to some slave traders and told my father I was eaten by a wild animal. A tough one for sure. Joseph was sold to a man named Potiphar, one of the Egyptian king, Pharaoh's officials. But get this, even though Joseph was enslaved and far from home, the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph, you fell pretty far. I'm so sorry. How about, tell us about your time with Potiphar. Well, actually I did okay. Potiphar really liked me. He put me in charge of his house and everything he owned. <laughs> You're headed back in the right direction. Keep on climbing. But then... But then? Potiphar's wife asked me to betray him, and I wouldn't do it. So she convinced Potiphar to throw me in prison. Oof. Yup. Joseph was thrown in prison for something he didn't do. But look at this. While Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. Prison, that's a tough situation. Yeah, it was tough and unfair, but you know what? The man running the prison trusted me and put me in charge of all the other prisoners. Two of those prisoners were special, weren't they? Yeah, the Pharaoh's personal wine taster and baker were in prison too and I helped them out, especially when they had dreams that they didn't understand. You see, God sometimes helps me know what dreams mean. So what did the dreams mean? Well, the wine taster dreamed that he was going to, in three days, be released from prison, and the Pharaoh was going to give him his job back. 
I told him to put in a good word to the Pharaoh for me. <laughs> Whoa, a direct connection to the king of Egypt? You're on your way up. <laughs> so, did the wine taster remember to tell Pharaoh about you? No, he forgot, and I had to remain in prison. <laughs> You're not very good at this game. Well, it's not just a game to me. It's my life. And sure, things don't always go the way I expect, but God has always been with me. God was with me when I was in the well. God was with me when I was enslaved in Egypt, even in prison. So I'm going to hold on, knowing that no matter what the future holds, God will always be right there. <laughs> yes! Amazing, you did it! Yeah, I didn't really do anything, but yay! I'd like to thank our contestant, Joseph, who, with God's help, kept climbing. Thanks for watching. Make it to the top! What happened to Joseph was scary and unfair, but his story doesn't end in prison. We'll hear more about Joseph next time. Oh, cool, a cliffhanger. Yeah. And Joseph just kept going, didn't he? He did. Remember, Joseph wasn't alone. God was with Joseph no matter what he was going through, just like God is with you and me. All of us will go through our ups and downs in life. And sometimes we just have to hold on and believe that God is there with us. Really great story, my friend. No problem. See you next time. Cameron, tell stories that are really, really great. Better than a donut on a big old, big old plate. Yeah, that's gonna be huge. Uh -huh. Reveal the question. Today's question is, what helps people get through hard things? Oh, uh, let's see, talking to friends, family, maybe even a counselor or a grown-up you trust. And you can talk to God when oh, you're yeah. going through something hard. People can get through hard things by taking their mind off the problem. Reading a book, playing a game. Or writing a song. Don't know. However you deal with hard times, know that they don't last forever. And know that God is with you. You know, another thing that won't last forever, this show. Hey, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Hold on. We'll be there. Yeah. Or we'll be square. Or we'll be a donut.